Writing your letter of intent can be one of the most difficult parts of your residency interview, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I'm going to go over my do's and don'ts of writing a letter of intent. Here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist and a PGY1 resident who is wanting to help you get the residency of your dreams and in turn that career you've always been looking for. Before we jump in, I do want to do a little disclaimer here that the advice I'm sharing in this video is based on my own personal experience, which may be different from yours. So when you look at this advice that I'm giving you, think about it from your perspective and take the pieces that you need and leave those that you don't. Okay, with that in mind, here we go. Writing a good letter of intent is extremely important for your residency application. The thing is, it's really that one chance that you get to show your program your personality. It's that opportunity to speak a little bit more freely than you can in everything that's more rigid, such as your CV or your extracurricular activities, which is the rest of that application. While it may not be exactly what gets you the interview because all those other pieces have to be in place, a bad one can definitely get your application thrown out, which is why it's so important that we write a good one. So here are my do's and don'ts of writing a letter of intent. First, you need to do your research and look at other letters of intent. It's very important that you see, one, the structure, so you're doing it professionally and making sure you have all the addresses that you need and the salutation correctly and the closing correctly and what other people have put content in. I think it's good to be a little bit personal here where you talk about your story, how you got here, that's how they know who you are as a person. In that research, it's appropriate to ask Dr. Google and see what's out there in the world, as well as talk to maybe other pharmacists or that have been through a residency, or maybe you have friends who are currently doing one as a PGY-1 or PGY-2. Either way, those are great people to talk to. What you don't want to do is copy a template. This will get your application thrown out immediately because what happens is several people go and they Google the same thing and the first thing that pops up is a University of California, San Francisco template. And if you follow that template and so does somebody else, you get like six applications that have the same exact wording and nothing is personal about it. What's good about this template? It gives you an idea of the things to include. What's bad about it is if you copy any of those words. If you copy any of those words, that is plagiarism, which is bad, and it's gonna get your application thrown out. So don't plagiarize. What you should do is make a template for yourself. What I mean by that is knowing what you wanna put in your letter of intent for your applications, you're often going to use that same material over and over and over again because you're applying to the same type of programs and you have the same intent, which is to get a residency. So there's the big important pieces that you want. For me, I was applying to pediatric hospitals, so I wanted to emphasize my experience at pediatrics and why I loved it so much. So that stayed consistent throughout all of my letters. But what changed is why I was interested in specific programs, which is typically for a little bit different reasons. Some of them, it was because of their teaching opportunities that really struck my interest because I have a love for doing that. Some of them, it was just some unique rotation opportunities that was special for that program. So it's important to talk about that and why you'd be a good fit there. So having that template, I kept some of those pieces that I was always going to say, but then could change it for each program and it was a lot quicker than rewriting a letter of intent for all 10 programs I applied to. What you don't wanna do is submit it without triple checking your work. If you use that template, it is very, very simple for you to accidentally leave a piece of information that is not pertinent to that program. So if you are gonna make a personal template for yourself, check it, check it again, and then check it one more time before you submit it because the last thing you wanna do is have the wrong name, a rotation opportunity that's not there, or some other blip in that that shows that maybe you didn't look very closely at your application before you hit the submit button. One of the things I recommend is changing everything over to a PDF when you've done that final check so you know what's been checked. And you can do that and you can check it once, twice, triple check, PDF, then it's ready to go to be uploaded. Do make sure that you include the right address, including the right person. And don't just assume that the ASHP website is correct. 
This is a blip that you can make very easily because the ASHP website is not easy to change and a lot of times programs don't update it as regularly as maybe they should. So always go back to the website. If there's a discrepancy between the program's actual website and the ASHP uh, page, then definitely okay for you to send an email maybe to one of the current residents or whatever contact information you got at mid-year if you got contact information from them and just ask who to address it to. Like I said before, a big do is making it personal. Why are you a good fit for their program? Why are you interested in a specific area of study? Why are you pursuing a residency? All of those things are important to include in your letter of intent because it helps understand your intentions, which is to get the residency. What you don't want to do is overshare too personal of information that maybe isn't appropriate for a professional setting. So have somebody else read it, see what they think. I always encourage people to have somebody that knows you really well read over it. So I had my dad and my best friend and my husband, they all helped review things. But I also had people on the professional side, such as some of my classmates and professors look at it as well. So you get two angles and so on the family side, they know me personally, and so they could give me advice about me as a person, whereas the people who looked over it that were professionals knew me from that angle and would tell me if I was oversharing or doing something that maybe would be viewed as unprofessional when the reader reads it who doesn't know me. So you do want to talk about how you're gonna help the program. Yes, this is your residency, and you're doing a residency to grow and learn, but they are also investing time and energy into creating you into this better practitioner that is going to be able to be more self-sufficient and help patients. So why should they take the time and energy that is required to train a resident if you're not gonna give them something in return? So yes, why should they invest in you? What are you bringing to the table that is different than all the other candidates that are there? And can you bring something that, you know, they can really use. What's important here though is that you don't over exaggerate in your skills. If you go further and stretch the truth a little bit, one, they're gonna ask you about it if it's super out there and you're like, wow, normally we don't get candidates that have this, you need to be able to back it up. It's important not to exaggerate, but make sure that you do get across what your big strengths are. So if you've had a lot of leadership, tell them about that leadership and what makes you a great candidate because of that experience. Maybe you've volunteered and done a lot of event planning. That could be beneficial as well in a different way. So talk about those things that make you unique and what you can bring to the table to the program because of those things. Like I said before, do have someone look over your letter of intent. I recommend professional and personal sides of things, but if you only have one, anybody will do. Your significant other, your best friend, whoever you can find to do it because it is a lot of work having them look over one and just tell you, you know, I think this is good. Here's some grammar things, spelling things, even those things versus like the professional side of the wheel where you're trying to figure out, did I put this word in the right spot? Is this the right thing to say? I don't know. Well, at least your grammar and spelling's right, even if you don't know that. What you don't wanna do is ask somebody the last minute, especially a professor or one of your preceptors. Those people are extremely busy. It's the holiday season. They are out of town visiting family, trying to take care of things. And the last thing you want to do is ask them like two days before your application is due. If that's the case, again, a friend or a family member will work just fine because they're going to get the basics of what you need down. And hopefully these tips will help with all those other pieces that maybe you were concerned with. Last but not least, do take this part of your application very seriously, but don't over stress about it. The more you stress, the more likely you are to make mistakes and not get the point across, which is why you're such a good candidate and why you're gonna be a benefit to their team. What I recommend for each letter is reflect on why you're doing this. Why do you wanna do a residency? What are you hoping to get out of that? What can you bring to the program? And why do you specifically like that program? If you include those things, for the most part, you're gonna meet their qualifications for the letter of intent, hit all the points that you need to, and it's a lot less stressful if you just think about it in those buckets. I promise, you can do it. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I'm going to be doing tons more residency videos. You can also check out some of my other residency prep videos in the description below. If you do have any questions at all, please leave them in that comments below. I'm going to be checking these 
up until I know the deadlines go until like January 6th-ish plus. So I'm going to be checking those messages every single day and responding to you to make sure that you are 100% prepared to hit that submit button. Good luck with your residency applications and I will see you next time. Bye!